welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and look who it is back in the shed. I am the shed, Martin. Uh, yeah, Neil's on here this week. Glad to join you in the shed, Martin. Mate, it seems like weeks since you've been in the dirt shed. It's been a while. It, it's been a while. I was on the other side shooting the EMBN show. Yeah, but yeah, it's been a while since I've been in the dirt shed, so nice to be back. Yeah, very cool to have you. Um, I've sort of been in the dirt shed for a little while now, but uh, it's kind of working You have. Out. It's weird. I wondered so, what that smell was, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird setup. Um, what do you think of my motocross top? How cool is this? Yeah. What time's the first moto, Martin? Uh, soon. I'm going to have to get through the show <laughs> quick because I've got a race coming up. Yeah, I'm enjoying nice. feeling very mountain bikey today. I've got my helmet here and everything. Look. I'm ready to go. Perfect. Literally feeling it. Um, right, this week we are talking about diversity in mountain biking because um, it's a bit of a... It's a tricky subject, actually, because mountain biking is very white, um, and there's no real obvious reason for that, but we've been looking into it, haven't we? Well, yeah, I spoke to Elliot Jackson, who has admirably um, been very busy, but he's launched the Grow Cycling Foundation last year, and um, he's the very rare combination of being very talented on a bike and very intelligent. So of all the people uh, to get involved and do something about it, Edit is a man, and he is one of very few professional black mountain bike athletes out there. Yeah, let's see what he had to say. All right, in the shed this week, uh, virtually, of course, we've got Elliot Jackson. Uh, you look like one of the busiest people inside the mountain bike industry athlete, presenter, data analyst. Uh, of course, there hasn't been much racing lately, but you seem like a pro that has a lot more going on than just racing. Yeah, totally. I feel like I've, um, yeah, especially in the in the last year, I've just decided to not say no to anything. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think it's funny because I feel like when I was racing, I was kind of like known as like the lazy guy um, because I would like sit inside or whatever. And I remember being in New Zealand and Eddie Masters and the Vans X would be like, oh, the house cat is here. <laughs> 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 but I would be like working on stuff or whatever, you know, but um, no, I, I think it's cool. I, um, I'm really happy to be, to be busy. Um, I guess there, there have been some athletes kind of at a lost end. There's not been much racing going on. Um, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like you can't wait to get back racing? Do you feel prepared or do you feel like, you you know, the, the, the rest of the stuff is is fun and fulfilling as well? Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I feel like I'm uh, I'm in school because like all of the all the races got pushed back. So I'll be racing Crankworks. Um, but like the first Crankworks, I think, isn't in June. And so normally I would be training. Um, but now I'm like, oh, I think I can, I think I can wait a little bit. <laughs> I think I've got some time. Um, so yeah, like personally, I'm, I am like really excited to be, to get back and like do some races and see see my friends. And then, you know, for the World Cups, I'll be going there and still presenting and stuff like that. And I think that is something I'm like, really, really hope that the schedule kind of stays the same because I really want to get out and, and uh, see some racing. And you changed sponsors after a long stint on Giant, uh, on Santa Cruz, a dream sponsor for a lot of people. Yeah. But particularly this time must be quite a hard time to change sponsor when, you know, on paper, you know, there's not a lot of things going on. You've got to, you know, push yourself somehow. How's that been? Yeah, totally. I, I kind of, I was laughing about it because, um, you know, for the past couple of years, I was like, ah, like, you know, it'd be great. If I was riding for Santa Cruz, but I was like, I would be like, yeah, I'm riding for Santa Cruz, but not really doing anything. Um, so I, I think this year, you know, it kind of just finally lined up. You know, I've been such good friends with all of them for so long and they've just supported me for no reason, right? Like all the projects that I've had, you know, taking me out to dinner, just being kind of part of the family. And um, this year, I think it, it just made a lot of sense because I have a lot of projects going on um, whether it's, you know, doing video projects and helping with bike launches to, you know, racing at Crankworks, presenting at the, at the, uh, at the World Cups and kind of doing some other cool Red Bull projects on the bike. Um, and so I think that's just like a lot of synergy around what I'm doing and really kind of blending, uh, more of like a personality, uh, being able to communicate. I think that's kind of where my role and like strength lies. Um, and I think now I kind of have the opportunity to connect a lot of different pieces, uh, so it makes sense. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, like you say, total synergy. I think the, you know, there's some really fast racers that maybe don't have much going on other than racing, and I guess they probably find it harder eventually transitioning into whatever they do afterwards. So it's great to have some, you know, some irons in the fire, I guess. But, you know, one of the big projects you've done last year was Grow Cycling Foundation. Uh, tell us about that. Tell us about your aim for that foundation. Totally. So the mission is uh, to promote education, access and opportunity that advance diversity, inclusion and in cycling. Um, and it was really about just me saying, <clears throat> looking back on my life and, and saying, man, um, I got really lucky, right? Like it was lucky that I grew up in a place where I could build dirt jumps. Um, lucky that I had parents that were able to, that I was able to fly to Italy for the first time and, and try, try out World Cup mountain biking. Um, and that kind of doesn't exist for a lot of people. So it's really about saying, um, and we kind of think of the bike as being this universal thing. Um, but you know, if you live in the city, like if you live in downtown Los Angeles, you had to drive an hour just to get to some dirt. Um, and there's no bike lanes or anything like that. And so why would you ever kind of pick up the bike? So it's really about saying, if you want to become a cyclist, um, how can we put in the infrastructure that'll allow you to even uh, take that opportunity and pursue it. Yeah, it's amazing to see. Uh, it's good to see actually in the UK there's been a lot of uh, really high quality pump tracks being made in inner city places for kids of, you know, of any background to be able to jump on a bike and ride something really cool. So it's great to see some companies get behind this as well. And I've got to say, Santa Cruz seems to be really putting their money where their mouth is, with, with money where their mouth is, with a really diverse lineup of athletes, especially with you know, it can be quite a sexist sport as well. So it's great to see athletes, you know, being pushed everywhere, every part of the sport, I suppose. Totally. And I think it's um, it's cool because it just kind of fits with Santa Cruz. Like they're open to telling, they've always kind of been open to telling different stories. Um, so it's not like they had to make some huge brand shift, right? Like, yeah, there was like a, a bit of a need to like say like, hey, cool, like you can hire some more women, some more kind of, um, diverse people like uh, Tuhoto in um, in New Zealand just like crushing it, yeah. Um, and and it just like fits right. Like it's not like it feels out of place. Um, yeah. So I think you know to their credit, they've been um, they were able to kind of like take some feedback and run with it. But then at the same time, it's like man, like fits like a glove anyway. Right. Thanks, Alec. Great to have you uh, virtually in the shed and hopefully catching you sometime in person in 2021. Yeah. Can't wait to see you not on a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks to Elliot. Uh, it's definitely a tough subject, but oh. even looking back last week to International Women's Day, I think it just goes to show that if you can give people some really strong role models, then it gives some people hope of riding. And we're lucky enough in the UK to have people like Tani Seagrave, Rachel Aston, that are brilliant role models for young people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and of course, uh, being a, a mountain bike rider with a disability, um, hopefully I'm showing people that you can, there's no reason why you can't get out on a mountain bike and ride because there just shouldn't be a barrier to doing it. So um, yeah, great stuff from Elliot there. Right, now I've got some amazing news now, Neil. We've got a brand new competition with Kamut. <laughs> Yes, competition time. Um, Kamut are giving away some ace prizes. Have you heard about this? More prizes, I can't believe it, Mark. Yes, yeah. I have heard we're giving away 10 Kamut Premium subscriptions lasting a year. Uh, very useful, I've got one of these. Uh, definitely do this, get involved. What do they do, Martin? Yeah, well, all you've got to do is uh, tag the GMBN account into, or invite them along to either your favorite ride or upload a new favorite ride, um, add some oh. photos and maybe a bit of a description, um, and mm. then we can find that ride and you will get a prize if you're chosen by Kamut as one of the top 10. That is not yeah. bad at all. Uh, um, check it out. We've put some uh, inspiration up there. I've put my favourite ride and Rich has. So have a look at our GMBN profile. Uh, there's loads of our epic rides in there as well from past videos. If you fancy some inspiration and getting yourself out on the trails that we've ridden. Yeah, absolutely. Right, it's time to get going with the show. So let's get into the news with Tom and Toff. What's up everyone, my name's Tom and we have got new bikes aplenty this week. I'm going to kick things off with some bikes from the small Andorran brand, Production Privé. They've released their 2021 bikes in two of their favourite colourways, black and a limited edition Land Rover Green. 
The Explorer editions of the Shan, Shan GT, and Shan Number no. 5 also get a topographical map of Andorra on their top tube, which is a pretty cool touch. It's also the first time we've seen Production Prevay's motorsport influence leaning in an off-road direction away from their usual race car libraries. They've also got 51 of these exclusive Indian motorcycle Burt Munro inspired Shan Number no. 5s, which are super cool. They're to celebrate the anniversary of Burt's famous land speeds record of 184 miles per hour on a 1000cc bike, which has stood the test of time since 1967. And did I mention they've also brought out this balance bike? Super cool. Rocky Mountain up next, they've retired the Thunderbolt and instead updated the Instinct to become their all day, every trail kind of bike. Last year, the Thunderbolt was available in 650B, whereas the Instinct was 29er only. This year, extra small size Instincts have 27.5 wheels, small size frames can have either 27.5 or 29, and from medium through to the big sizes are all 29ers. The Instinct has 140mm of travel on the rear, intended for use with a 150 fork to eat up single track and technical climbs, while still being fun on the descents. As well as Rocky's Ride 9 adjustment system to tailor the geometry exactly how you like, there's a 10mm chainstay chip too, and some nice down tube shuttle protection to keep that frame fresh. Next up, we look to YT. Now, I'm not gonna give you too much info on this because Doddy will be taking a much more in-depth dive on the tech show tomorrow, but YT have launched some fresh specs for their alloy Capras. Both pro and base builds are now available on all sizes, catering more for riders looking for an alloy enduro slash park bike in a wide range of builds. However, starting with the Jeff C, YT have also announced that they will be moving away from the traditional pro race comp base categorization of builds and instead towards their new numbered core system. YT will use the core system to grade the level of build, four being high spec and one being low spec. Within this grade, they'll be flex picking components in and out to react to launches of new products throughout the year. This means the latest and greatest componentry could become available on the bike you want without having to wait for next year's builds to be announced. Specialized have recently added two new shoes to their revamped 2FO lineup, the DH Clip and DH Flat. These downhill shoes feature specialized body geometry insoles, the Slipknot rubber compound, which is probably the best name for a rubber, and synthetic leather uppers for hard wearing and easy cleaning. Time for some race results from the Aussie National Championships now. We'll start with a downhill where Troy Brosnan took a convincing five and a half second win and where Shana Hearn took the top spot by a monstrous 22 and a half seconds. The margins were even more incredible in the XC, with Rebecca McConnell taking her eighth consecutive elite national title by an enormous 12 minutes. Victory in the men's was taken by Daniel McConnell, bringing his title count to an impressive 10. Keep an eye out for those Aussie national sleeves at upcoming races this year. It wasn't just Australia enjoying a bit of mountain bike racing this weekend though. There was also super tight racing at the American National Downhill Round at Windrock. Charlie Harrison took the win just 0.08 seconds faster than Dakota Norton. Frieda Running took the win in the women's race, just 1.3 seconds ahead of Kaylee Skelton. Oh, and a pretty impressive first outing for Team Yeti Fox, with Richie Rude taking first, Warren Niss in second, Sean Neer in third, and Quinn Reese taking seventh at Tennessee National Enduro. All right, once again, it is time to throw things over to Toff for the sickest thing of the week. Cheers, Tom. Hey, everybody. Right, so this week's sickest thing is this huge drop from Ramona out in Switzerland. Oh so Ramona is actually a World Cup cross country racer and she's had some really good results in the past. In 2014, she was the national champ in the under 17s category. And then last year, she actually podiumed third place in nationals as well, which is really hard because Switzerland is super competitive with cross country and they just breed some really good races. So she said she's never really enjoyed drops and stuff, especially after this crazy accident she had back in 2016 in Lenzerheide where she was on a cross country bike and she basically just had this huge explosion and had these crazy facial injuries and damaged liver. I was basically drinking out of straw for a week in hospital. And because there wasn't really much cross country racing going on last year, she decided to just go out into the mountains and ride for fun and address these fears, which is when she started to progress super fast at jumps and drops. So sick to see. But yeah, this particular drop was a bit extra sandy and she did land super flat, blew her foot up. And yeah, won't be riding for a few weeks. What's really cool to see is after last year, she now wants to race some downhill and she's already signed up to some EWS events. So maybe we'll see her there. Plus she's obviously going into elite category for cross country this year. So I wish her a really good season. Yeah, that's my sickest thing this week. It's time to go back to Tom and the Dirt Shed. <laughs> Man, that jump by Ramona was absolutely huge. <laughs> that was the sickest thing of the week. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> it really was. All uh, right, it's time for hacks and budgets. 
Well, we are starting with an absolute banger. This is Kapil in India, who wanted to make a manual trainer, but didn't it. spend the money on the timber. <laughs> he just used a spade, I guess, or maybe just spun his back wheel so fast that it's made a, a gap in the, in the dirt bank, and it's worked a treat. And even if he loops out, he lands nicely on the bank. It's such an amazing idea. It was so simple. I was laughing for about half an hour when I saw this. Well done, Kapil. Um, you can find Kapil out as Rage Wheels on YouTube, so make sure you check Rage him out. Rage Wheels. Um, but yeah, that is a brilliant solution. I really do love that. That's a hot Genius. one. Genius. Um, is this more of a bodge? This is, um, this I'm not sure what's one. worse, is the sort of wire, or oh, look at that massive <laughs> nut. <laughs> wow. <laughs> when I, I saw this one in the uploader, Neil, and I saw, I thought you're going to love this because this is so ugly. That but, is. But look what it did. Look, the ride from Rodrigo carried on. He was in Riyadh, um, and look at the photos from his holiday. He had an amazing day out. It worked. It, it's a bodge, but it worked. He was what they were the 40 kilometers out and noticed a noise from my crank. I bet there was a noise from that crank. There's only one bolt remaining. Uh, yeah. And that's what they found some scrap power cable and rusty nut and bolt. I mean, you've done well to find that stuff, to be fair. He really has. And it he, he, he worked, though. Good, fair play. Now, what about this one from Ian? <laughs> I love this. Oh, my life. Look at it. It's a um, wooden oh, shifter. <laughs> I can see what has happened here. I've, everyone's done this, surely you need their shifter. It can really hurt. Um, people, I've actually cut my short over my shifter and had a crash in a race before. Yeah. Uh, didn't break the shifter, but it did break my pride. Um, yeah. yeah. It's a good one. Ian has fixed it. Who are you giving the motocross top to this week, the race top? Um, it's a tough one this week, but I think I'm going to go with Kapil because yeah. hopefully that's inspired a few other people to try out the same thing. Absolutely. Congratulations, Kapil. Um, great stuff. Make sure if you've got a hack or a bodge, send it in to the GMBN uploader. We want to see your stuff and we want to give you a race top. Right, okay. It's time for an EWS update from Rick McLaughlin. Hello, Dirt Shed, and welcome to your weekly dose of everything Enduro World Series and EWSE. Now, Big news for us is that we had another qualifying event last weekend. This time it was the Emerson Free Peaks Enduro down in Dunedin in the south of New Zealand. And these races are fascinating because they start to see the big names entering and you can start to see the beginnings of a form book beginning to put itself together. But interestingly, it wasn't a big name who won the women's race. It was Gemma Hastings who had, believe it or not, entered herself into the novice category. We also saw Louise Kelly in action down there. She was on the podium from Live Racing. Ray Morrison out with a DNF due to a mechanical. So maybe we haven't seen the very best of Ray just yet, but we are early in the year. The men's race was won by Charlie Murray. Now he was one of the breakthrough acts of 2020. Lots of speculation at the end of last year as to whether or not Pivot Factory Racing, the team's champions, would be able to secure his employment for 2021 it's looking like maybe they haven't done because his social media is full of photoshop magic including him riding everything from a shopping mobility scooter to a horse on the way to that victory at the emerson free peaks but if you look carefully and i mean very carefully at a couple of those images you can just see a few logos starting to float around might be something might be nothing I also have a bit of news to update you on regarding Trek Factory Racing's Florian Nikolai. It turns out it is just a partially separated shoulder. They are hopeful he will be back on the bike within a couple of weeks. So that is great news from the only rider left to have raced every single Enduro World Series stage right from the series inception. So take a second to process that one and I'll see you next week. Action contest time now. Look at this. Is that Doddy doing a no handed wheelie? He's very talented at these, uh, young Doddy. I've yeah. never been able to do this. I always try. The bike just falls down when I try this. That's plumbing good. That is. You have to have a slight incline, don't you? Really like it. Yeah. A slight incline and then just. Clips. Yeah. Ah, clipped as well. Yeah. yeah, that makes all the difference. Got some good captions for this. We've got a lot of look mum, no hands, I've got to say. Um, yeah. Oliver, Oliver Schultz had a good one. Um, the moment you realise Blake has installed his cheese grips on your bike. 
What's that yeah. supposed to mean? That's one stinking. of my best inventions, Neil. It's stinking. Uh, I like this one from Cornish Cactus. When startled, a doddy will rear up to make himself look bigger <laughs> and intimidate his attacker. That that's is cool. That's unbeatable, surely, Martin. Well, you know what? It, it would be Cornish Cactus is a very reliable uh, caption man. <laughs> um, no, but our winner this week is from Jean Andre, and he says, "Hands up! You're being mugged." <laughs> Get it? Because oh, the winner, cactus, you've been the winner robbed. gets a mug. <laughs> <laughs> Good though, I like it. Yeah, well done. Um, Jean-Andre, you are getting mugged. We are sending you a GMBN mug for that. Um, right, Absolutely. look, this is the photo for this week's caption contest. Now just dive into the depths of your mind. Come on, give us an amazing caption for that photo. Put it in the comments down below and you could get mugged next week. That's a catchphrase on my stick. I like that. <laughs> Get involved. Right, we're into the bike vault and the best bike this week, Neil. I'm going to let you give a super nice t-shirt. <laughs> oh, anyway, that's good. you get yourself a super nice t-shirt, the best bike this week. Um, and we, we were asking last week, well, Rich was, he wanted to see some amazing cross-country weapons. So let's see if we got any. First bike from Ooh. Matthew. Ooh. Scott oh, Scott Spark. Ooh, Scott yeah. Spark RC900. Oh. That's a good looking machine. Got a RockShox Sid up front. Uh, Axis, well, full group set. It's got the wireless dropper post and the mech. That is one fancy mm. pants bike. And it's gotta be a super nice, surely. Yeah, it's 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 nice, but it's got the old tan on it, so that's a shame. It's super nice though, it's one of the things. You've hit the bell anyway. Um, next up, Phillips Specialized Camber. Whoa, that's an interesting looking bike. It's got the rock shocks. Oh, I forgot what those forks are called. What are they called? I used to have a set on my Canyon Lux. I used to actually really like them. A lot of people didn't. I they're super yeah. light, I know that. Um, yeah, I, I used to like, I used to really like an upside down fork on my moat. I had one on my moat, so I could trials bike. And uh, yeah, I always thought they looked really cool. Yeah. Um, um, but the stanchions are saying lower that he's just got and could get hit. They could, but although I never did. Um, but anyway, this is Philip who says he's got hooked on mountain biking in the summer of the COVID lockdown. And now he's super into it, so that's cool. Yeah, um, uh, what are you giving that, Neil? Nice. Nice. Okay, stingy. Um, next up, oh, there's no excuse for this. Look at this from Stephanie. <laughs> Whoa. Look at this. Unapologetic, I'd say that is. <laughs> uh, it's a Bird Ether 7 in Swinley Forest in the UK. Explored a new bit of the forest today on my Not Pink. Yes, that's the official colour name. Looks quite pink to me. It, it's very pink, um, and I'm giving it a, it's nice, it's nice. I can't give a, a bike that colour nice, uh, it's more than that. Um, oh, wow. I feel, I feel stingy now. Next up, this, I like this, because look, we've got like sort of the pre-build oh, yeah. picture, oh. and then it all coming together. It's beautiful Yeti from CJ. It's the ARC. XTR build. XTR, Ooh, it's good. I mean, XTR gets a full super nice, come on. Yeah, it's super nice, that one. That is super nice. Um, and last Ooh. last bike this week, because we are getting tight on time. This is from Mark. Yeah. It's his Scott Scale um, Tan Walls. The wheels look bigger. <laughs> nice. I don't know why. Is that just the sort of it's the depth of field of that picture or whatever? The bit, wheels look massive. I think the tan, I think the tan walls make the wheels look like they're in the distance. <laughs> Um, yeah. I'm getting, it's actually a really nice bike though. It's really nice. It uh, is. What are you giving it, Neil? Come on, let's finish off. It's super nice, isn't it? Super nice. Well done. We have had some fabulous bikes this week. Um, Neil, can you think of a theme of bikes for next week's bike vault? You've done hardtails, haven't you? Um, yeah, I guess hardtails was a great week, though. We could do hardtails again because there was so many good well, ones. Well, I was just thinking because I'm actually going for a hardtail shred with Blake next week, so I'm getting pretty excited about it. So maybe let's go for round two hardtails next week. Yes, yes, love it. Right, we've seen your bikes, it's time to see your riding, it's time for fails and sends. So let's hit the start button, go for it. You all right? Uh, 
That's it. Oh my god! Love it. Brilliant. Love it. Yeah. Good um, one this now, week. just a reminder, just a reminder. If you've got any riding, you've got a bike for your bike vault, especially a hardtail for next week, you've got a hack or a bodge, um, you want to get involved with the captions, you've got the uploader and the comment section down below. It's all there so you can be part of the Dirt Shed show yourself. So make sure you don't miss out on that opportunity. Um, Neil, you're going for a hardtail shred. I am. I can't wait. Uh, hopefully it dries out. It's been a very wet week this week in the UK, but anyway, time to shred with Blake. Uh, plus, I would say to the viewers, don't forget to get involved with competitions. There's a few out there at the moment, that new commute one, so get involved. Absolutely. Um, but until next time, we will see you in the Dirt Shed.